Welcome to Chamber, Chamber Exchange, a TV show. My name is Tim Murray, President and CEO of the Worcester Regional Chamber of Commerce. And Chamber Exchange, a TV show, is brought to you by our sponsors, Worcester Regional Airport and the Worcester Railers Hockey Club. Uh, clearly, the COVID-19 situation has impacted uh, airlines uh, across the, the globe, and Worcester being one of them. But uh, stay tuned, uh, more information and, and things coming. And Worcester Railers Hockey Club, uh, as we, we tape the show, waiting to, to hear about uh, the season tentatively scheduled to uh, begin in January. We got our fingers crossed. I'm really thrilled to have with us in this segment a longtime friend, uh, Steve Kerrigan, a Central Mass native and, and home again uh, uh, recently in a couple different ways. Uh, but Steve, a year and a half ago, so he's still new, uh, is the president and CEO of the Edward M. Kennedy Health Center. Steve, welcome. Thanks, Tim. I appreciate you having me. This is great. Yeah. Well, Steve, uh, your, your resume briefly. Uh, a long tenure with, with Senator uh, Ted Kennedy, you know, the champion on issues of health care throughout his career and really a catalyst in bringing uh, health care, you know, for, to everyone in Massachusetts, uh, working uh, with uh, Governor Romney and Governor Patrick, uh, legislators at the time, and then later with, with President Obama and uh, the Affordable Care Act uh, nationally. Uh, you also worked in, in a few different settings, the Attorney General's office, uh, the Massachusetts uh, Military uh, Heroes uh, 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 Democratic Party, but uh, you're kind of home literally and figuratively, uh, yes. Central Mass native and uh, working on issues of health care. Tell us a little bit about what you're up to. Thanks. It, um, it is a little bit of a homecoming for me. I tell the staff all the time that it was great to start my career working for Edward M. Kennedy, the person, and now I get a chance to work at the health center uh, named after him and really um, focus every day on uh, fulfilling his life's vision, which is bringing a uh, high quality care to, to folks all across our country. Um, I, I, the, I couldn't love a job more than I do this one. Um, as many of you know, um, uh, this was the Great Brook Valley Community Health Center for a number of years. We were founded in 1972 um, by seven who I call our founding mothers uh, who lived in the, in the housing complex and they were tired of um, having to bring their children and their family to emergency rooms to get primary care. So they hired a nurse, uh, took one uh, bedroom in one apartment and started seeing patients. And from that uh, grew um, what our health center is now, which serves almost 30,000 patients a year and 135,000 visits, uh, both in Worcester and in Framingham, but also in Milford. Uh, so we are, we are an expansive um, organization that does primary medical care, uh, behavioral health care, behavioral health integration, dental care, optometric care, we have a pharmacy at two of our locations, so we're we are uh, we're we're wide across um, the region, and frankly, at this time in particular, um, critical uh, more than ever before to make sure that organizations like ours and Family Health, our sister organization in the southern part of Worcester, uh, are given the support and strength that, that we need. Um, you and, know, and, yeah, go ahead. And, no, and, and and that that history, you know, we we. Senator Kennedy's uh, career, but you know, dating back to the '60s, um, yeah. there was identified across the country that you know today we talk about uh, you know uh, food deserts where there might not be uh, supermarkets, you know, with a range mm -hmm. of healthy foods for populations. But in the '60s, it was determined that, in particular, in some of our urban and rural areas, yeah. there was no literally no health care, and so the federal government uh, helped uh, create the, the health care movement, uh, the health care centers uh, movement. And Senator Kennedy was key in a lot of that legislation. And, and we've seen Massachusetts be a pioneer. You're one of a number yeah. in the state. We are. And so it's funny. We, um, as I said, tragically, the summer when we were dealing with the George Floyd um, situation and, and the racial unrest that happened, you know, health centers were uh, born in the civil rights movement, as you said. Like, this is really about creating health equity uh, in uh, underserved communities. You know, the first, there were, the, everybody, both us in, in Massachusetts and down in the Mississippi Delta, they claimed the first community health center because they were founded around the same time uh, to highlight both areas that you talked about. In Dorchester, uh, they founded um, uh, what is now part of Harbor Health. Um, uh, and in the Mississippi Delta, they founded a community health center in a much more rural area. Um, and the idea being that uh, folks have, don't have that opportunity or pathway uh, to access. And you know, our health center, 92 different languages are spoken in our health center. Uh, and we spend almost a million dollars a year on interpretive services. But imagine if we weren't here for those folks. If, you know, 1.1 million Bay Staters alone get their healthcare at community health centers. When I worked for Ted Kennedy back in the 90s, 500,000 people 
got their health care at a community health center at 58 health centers around Massachusetts. Now it's 38 health centers and 1.1 million. And then you look at what happened this year with COVID-19. You look at 10 million Americans now are out of work, a lot of whom lost their health insurance uh, related to the job loss. Uh, 29 million Americans before COVID got their health care at a community health center. So now we are we are that safety net more than ever before uh, and necessary. And, and the critical funding that we're receiving during this pandemic or had received during the pandemic has helped us keep our doors open, which is our number one focus. Because if we're not there to serve these patients, they're gonna end up in emergency rooms uh, and at a time when we're in the middle of a pandemic, we, don't, we need to keep all emergency rooms, all hospital beds, all those access points open uh, for patients who, who really need to have no other pathway. So we consider our job critical on a normal day, uh, right. but in this national and international crisis, uh, we know the work that our team does is that much more valuable. And uh, we've got a couple of minutes left, but in yeah. it segues, you know, with the history, let's talk a little bit about the future. Uh, President-elect Biden has talked about strengthening the Affordable Care Act uh, as a case before the Supreme Court as we speak. And early indications are that, that uh, maybe pieces of it may get struck down, but, but the core of it is likely to hold. You know, as, as you see a vision and a pathway forward legislatively between the Congress and the Senate, and, and President like Biden's administration, you know, where do you see the healthcare centers playing in, in potential amendments or changes to the legislation? So I, it's a great question. Um, first, you know, we we fully support and we worked the vice president's campaign uh, pointed me to the platform committee for the DNC and uh, we got some folks on his advisory councils for the transition for health centers to make sure that, that voice is really heard. Uh, and uh, we got some good language in there. The vice president knows a lot, sorry, the president elect knows uh, uh, more than most about the impact that community health centers have. Um, and, and so what our number one focus is stabilizing our national funding. Um, and Jim McGovern knows this because he's been a champion for us in Congress. Uh, but we have to fight each and every year to make sure that we get just baseline funding. And here in Massachusetts, we have to fight to make sure that our rates are increased. We haven't seen an increase in dental reimbursement rates since 2007. So we do feel like we've got a lot of good opportunities with President-elect Biden and his team, his focus like a laser beam on improving the Affordable Care Act, regardless of the impact, I, I agree with you, I think the court is gonna leave most of it in, in place. Uh, regardless of that, he's gonna continue to work to strengthen it with public option and other things. Uh, but recognizing the key piece that community health centers play um, is really, really important. We have oftentimes been the release valve for the healthcare system. You know, send poor folks um, there, they'll get healthcare. Uh, that's not, who we are as an organization, we are a critical part. I mean, 29 million Americans, 10% of Americans get their health care at community health centers. So we need stable funding. We need to make sure that we have champions in Congress and in the White House. And I, I think I think we will have that. I will say the final thing is telehealth. Uh, when we started this, we were hope, we've been hoping for months before COVID that we'd get telehealth permission. Now that we have it, we need to keep it because we're able to see 118% of our visits uh, from last year, this past September. We're able to keep our doors open, literally, by yeah. being able to keep people at home. So it's been and, really, really important. And we're gonna wrap up just one quick, and the other thing I want people to know is your major employer. How many employees, Steve? 362. 360 employers in, in, in an industry that pays well and gives people real pathways. And uh, Yeah, folks can go to kennedychc.org to look at some career opportunities if they'd like. Great, uh, Steve, great to be with you. Look forward to having Thanks. you back soon and uh, welcome home literally and figuratively. Appreciate it, Tim. Stay with us uh, for the next segment of Chamber Exchange, the TV show. Central Massachusetts business owner? Do you want a voice in public policy and economic development? Are you looking to increase your network or generate new business leads? A membership with the Worcester Regional Chamber of Commerce will provide you with a variety of tools and opportunities to help you stay connected with the diverse and growing business community of the region. We just started right out of school, so we didn't know the team of professionals that we were going to need to start a company. So we were able to get put in touch with people who offered those services, and that, that helped us out a lot.
lot. Joining the chamber can provide you access to, to great resources, connections that you wouldn't otherwise have. Serving as New England's largest chamber of commerce, the chamber is a proud supporter and advocate of the local business community. Advocacy is the biggest benefit that I see. The chamber is there to benefit business and frankly to benefit economic development for all of us residents or business owners. Join today to take advantage of the Chamber's wide range of resources and benefits. Let's all do our part to safely support small business during these challenging times. From delicious dinners, to great fashion finds, to that perfect pick-me-up, Worcester is open for business. Join your community in entering the We Love Worcester photo contest today. Visit discovercentralmass.org for details. Worcester, we're in this together.